Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Annie Bees. How are you? I'm finally back. I've been meaning to make this video for almost two weeks now since I got back from Galleria. Um, but oh my gosh, we had the wedding. My son got married last Saturday, which was awesome. We had such a great time. Um, and so the week after Galleria was all filled with wedding plans and stuff like that. And so I didn't have a chance to make a video until now. But I wanted to do it as soon as possible before I forget things. Um, so, hello. If you um, are new to my videos, my name is Annie and I'm the designer behind Annie B's Folk Art. And if you're returning to my channel, welcome back and thanks for coming. It's great to have you here. So, Needlework Galleria, let's just jump right in. It was awesome. It was amazing. I had such a great time. I'm so glad I went. I wasn't able to stay for the entire Galleria um, because of the wedding. My husband and I really had to get back. But um, it was, you know, I was really happy for what I was able to do. And next year I'll be there for the whole thing. So um, I went down Wednesday night because I had a class Thursday morning with Beth Seal from Summer House Stitchworks. And um, that class was at like 9 o'clock in the morning, which is, you know, the crack of dawn for me because I'm not a morning person. So we went down the night before so we could get settled in the hotel and I could get over there in plenty of time. So, um, yeah, we so we I didn't stay at the um, Embassy Suites because one of my sons works for Marriott and we get an awesome friends and family discount. So I stayed at the local Marriott, which was like six minutes away from the embassy. So it was perfect. I mean, it was like no problem at all to get there in time for stuff. And um, so that was awesome. And it was, you know, worked out just perfectly. My husband went with me and partly um, the reason he came was because I'm planning to hopefully be a vendor there next year. And so he was coming to look things over and kind of do like a reconnaissance mission and figure out, you know, what the format is and what we're going to need to bring and how to set it up and all that kind of stuff. And so um, it was kind of surreal because, you know, cross stitch is my world and, um, my husband isn't, he, he does do the books for my business, the paperwork, but he, other than that, he's not obviously very involved in it. And so going to a, you know, event like this and having him there was interesting. <laughs> so when the merchant mall opened, um, I'm out there shopping the mall and I'm going from vendor to vendor and I'm, you know, stashing up and he is going around from vendor to vendor taking notes and talking to people and get you know asking them questions and things like that so he at one point he was in the room of la di da and who i've never met before and i come in there and he's in there like yakking it up and talking to them and you know they're from wisconsin and we're from northern illinois and we're talking about all that kind of stuff and he's you know you know, like acting like he's known them forever and the two of them are talking and I am just like, it was like my two worlds colliding. It was just surreal. <laughs> so that was interesting and fun. And um, he was awesome. He was, he's always so much help. And so he went around and got lots of tips and advice from people and took notes of how people set up their booths and things like that. So that was awesome. And then I was able to just have a good time shopping, which I did. So, um, I took two classes. One was from Beth Seal of Summerhouse Stitchworks, and it was for this little pin keep that is on a pedestal, which I'll show you. And she sent out the kits ahead of time, so there was pre-stitching, which was very minimal. It was, like, super easy to get it done. It was really small. And so there was, you just brought your pre-stitched piece, and then she showed you how to finish the pin keep in the class. The class was three hours. Here's the pin keep. It was amazing. It was so much fun. So here's the pre-stitching. It was called Harriet's Pin Keep and the, the pattern had the initials HB 
but I changed my H to an A because I'm Annie Belcher. So, um, so we brought this piece to the class and then she brought all the supplies and we um, made the little pin cushion that backed it with the wool. She taught us how to paint the pedestal with um, chalk paint. And then we used like a wax, like a um, wax sealer over it, which was really awesome. And then um, she gave us this little, I forget what these are called, um, and the ribbon and everything and all of the vintage bead or beads, buttons, which are like a lot of a mother of pearl. And then we just sewed it together. And then we also made these little counting pins in the class. Let's see, where's the camera? Let's see if I can... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it won't. There. So it's just beads on a long pin. And they're so pretty. I love this one. I've made those before in other things, other classes and stuff, but they're always fun to have. Anywho. So that was the class with Beth Seal. It was really fun. Everybody in there was like super sweet. And so it was really nice to be with other stitchers and things like that. Um, part of the class she gave us. Um, so we had the directions on how to finish, which were very nice and detailed. This is what she gave us. And look at the directions. Isn't that nice? So easy to see how to do it whoops <laughs> and on the back of there is a sampler so that was a free pattern and that's Harriet's sampler and then um, I went to her booth later and I bought another piece that goes with the sampler which is this Harriet's um, Valentine bouquet and that you can fit on the top of the sampler and it makes it just like a longer piece isn't it pretty? Those of you who like primitive, primitives. Her colors are very primitive. Anyway, so that was really nice. And then she also gave us like a free pattern. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to that. Here it is. This was just a freebie as part of the class. And then, like I said, all the finishing supplies and everything like that. So that was super fun. So that was Thursday. And then um, they had stitching rooms open and things like that. And if you were a member, um, so if you had signed up ahead of time, <clears throat> excuse me, for the membership, which gives you like free admission and stuff like that, um, you got a free gift when you registered and then you also got to go to the merchant mall like ahead of everyone else so there was like a preview night Thursday night before it was like open to the public and so this was the free gift which is a it's a little bit mushed from my luggage but it's a button what do they call it a button basket I've seen these before <laughs> Mine is really mushed. But anyway, it's used for um, orts. So isn't that cute? It came flat. So I'll show you. And I'm sure these buttons are from just another button company. So it comes like flat like that. And there's a pattern out there to make this. I've seen it. I don't know whose pattern it is. But anyway, it comes like this. So this is what they gave you. And then you just fold up each side and then bring it together and use the string to hold it together with the buttons. Isn't that super stinking cute? Anyway, I can't do it right now on the camera. <laughs> anyway, like that. Isn't that the cutest? So cute. So everybody's walking around with these little ort boxes which are super cute and then you got to go to the merchant mall like the night Thursday night um, before everybody else even though 
it was super crowded that first night but so the merchant mall was amazing it was an entire floor in the embassy suites and um you could i mean every single room was filled with a merchant so that it was a really good variety um there were a lot of people there and it was really fun for me because you know i got to meet people that i've never that i've always admired and you know always wanted to meet so who did i meet i met stephanie from pam and steph i didn't meet pam i met stephanie i never saw pam the whole time <laughs> i don't know why i kept running into stephanie i never saw pam um i met lorraine from rags to stitches usa she has a, a floss tube channel um i met barbara from pedal pusher she has a floss tube channel she's super sweet and she's um, a designer too and she has a, a Etsy shop and a lot of like PDF designs and her designs are super cute. Okay I'm back we'll try this again I ran out of memory. Um, okay so the people I met um, Karen from So Much to Love she's the one who makes those awesome project bags. I met Teresa from Kitten Stitcher, Janice from Noteworthy Needle, um, Lindy from Lindy Silver Needle which I was really excited to meet her because she's been a really good customer of mine in the past. Um, I didn't meet Kathy Roganella, who is the one who runs Needlework Galleria, and she runs a little shop that's near to where I live, or it's like an hour away, it's not that near, but um, she runs a shop called The Inspired Needle, which is in Lamont, Illinois, and... Um, I wanted to meet her, but every time I saw her, she was so busy, like running around, and I just didn't want to bother her. But I did meet her sister, Nancy, so that was awesome. And then I met Katrina Boyd, and she is so sweet. I love her. Um, she's the one who runs all of those retreats that, um, who has mentioned them on Floss Tube? I think Jen from Jen Stitching Niche and some other like ladies that live in the South. So they're mostly in the South, but, um, so she and I uh, have talked about maybe doing a retreat in the future or something like that. So that's exciting, but she was so, so sweet. I was really excited to meet her. Um, so that was fun. The networking part of it was really fun. A lot of people were, um, really gracious when they found out I was a new designer and offered to give me advice and help and things like that which was really really sweet and I can use all the help I can get so that was awesome so let's talk about stash I shopped I definitely shopped I showed you some of the things from Summer House Stitch Works but I also went to her booth and I picked up some really cute things so one of them is these um these are labels that you can put on your linen when you buy it. So it has a place for, you can write down the count of linen, the color, the company you bought it for, the size of the piece that you bought, and most importantly, the project that you bought it for. <laughs> and stick that on your linen and, you know, then when you put it in your stash you and come across it, you know what you bought it for. So that was from Summerhouse Stitchworks. Um, I also bought this thing from her called the Purple Thang, and it's a little, um, I don't know, it's just a little thing that you can use. when In the class, we used it to put this, um, put the pedestal onto the pin cushion, and we used that Purple Thang to push under you know, the seam allowance around this circle, and it worked really well. So one side is like flat, and then the other side is pokey. And so just in sewing in general, you can just use it for a million things. So I've seen these before, and I never did buy one. So when she had them in her shop, I got one of those. Um, she also gave us in the class this little, it's a um, beeswax waxer. So this would be more for when you're doing like the sewing. It's embossed, but I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see it. A little flower embossed on there. And this was made by Janice of Noteworthy Needles. She does a lot of beeswax molds and things. She had tons in her room. So that was nice. I'm excited to get that. 100% beeswax. 
Um, what else did I get from her? I know I bought more stuff. Well, I bought the um, this part that goes to the the sampler that she gave us that I can't show you because there's not a picture. All there is is the the actual chart, and I don't want to, you know, obviously show the chart. Um, I'll show it to you when I stitch it. And I oh, I also bought from her Beth Seal. Um, I bought the first set that she came out with of the Fragments in Time. So this is the 2014-2015 set. They're so pretty. I love her. You know, she's very primitive in her color choices, but her color choices are different, even for primitives. I mean, they're really amazing, the colors that she puts together. So I'll show you these real quick. They're so cute. I love them. It's such a good idea, because... For people like me who love samplers but don't have time to commit, or you get overwhelmed by the idea of committing to a gigantic sampler that's going to take you a year to stitch, these are awesome. So they're just little fragments, little sampler fragments. Aren't they pretty? Love them. So cute. I haven't decided if I'm going to do them individually or all together on one piece. I think they would look really pretty on one piece. And she does provide, um, when I bought those, she gave me a chart with the, like a border if you want to do them all together and a plan for how to do it. Um, but I haven't decided. I don't know if I'm going to do them separately or together. I'm afraid like if I decide to do them all together, I'll be overwhelmed by it'll be just another big project and then I won't want to work on it. And then I also bought the breads that go to that. Look at how pretty. She likes green. <laughs> Very pretty. It's going to be gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And I bought some doubloon from her. And this is to do Harriet's sampler, which I can't show you because it's only um, a chart and doesn't have a finished picture. But isn't it gorgeous? So that's what I got from Beth. And then um, I went to um, Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, and I bought three pieces from her. bought this purple, which is called, it's a Jovelin, and it's called Soaring Dragonfly. Sorry I didn't take it out of the package. Probably should have. And I think it's 32 pounds. Isn't that gorgeous? I have some Halloween pieces that are just black, all done in black that I want to do on like the purple. And then I couldn't decide, you know, I can never decide if I like the purple that is that goes to blue or the purple that goes to red. So I got that. This is, um, it's called a mare and this is a linen and it's 32 count. And then I also got this purple <laughs> to give myself choices. And this is a linen and it's 32 count, and it's called Sugar Plum Fairy. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And then I went to Silk Weavers, and at Silk Weavers I bought this gorgeous piece of fabric because I just couldn't not buy this. Isn't that pretty? This is 28 count, and it's called Solo. I don't know if you can really see how gorgeous this is. There. You can see some of the modeling there. So pretty. And then, let's see. Oh, I think I also bought, no. I didn't buy those from her. Okay, so then we'll talk about the pumpkins. And if you watch Pam and stuff, I'm sure you've seen her pumpkins, um, the ones they bought. So, Janice from Noteworthy Needle was doing this deal where you, she would punch the holes. If you buy the pattern and bring your own pumpkin, she would punch the holes for you to stitch your pumpkin. So this one is the small pumpkin and she punched a B for me. And it's got these like two little doodads. I started it. It's a little bit difficult to stitch <laughs> because for one thing, you can barely fit your hand in there. 
and it's like an awkward angle when you're stitching it and then also sometimes the needle the thread sticks in the holes because the holes are pretty small and um, I've had to use like a hemostats to pull it through or if you have like a needle puller or something like that might be handy but it'll be cool when it's done I just uh, I have to work on it little by little because it takes some wear and tear on your hand so I got that one also I wore like wear this handies glove when I work on it because the opening is small and it's just like scratching up my hand so but it'll be awesome when it's done <laughs> okay and then also from her she had gorgeous stuff in her shop like I didn't really know who she was before I've never really I think I've seen a few things she did but I just she just was never really on my radar but um, one thing I bought was she had the sample there and it was gorgeous so this is um, it's called small matters and it's all a bee theme and she had she had a big um, I think this was inside of a tray and then this is the thing that kills me. This is like a, a bee hive, like a modern bee hive, all painted. And that's a pin cushion. And it was so cute. And then there's just, you know, like a needle, I mean, a scissor fob and a needle book and a pin cushion and just all kinds of stuff. It, it was really, really cute. So I got that pattern from her. And um, she also had this one, which was, it's made to go around a pail, or she had it like, um, you know, priscillified where it was like magnetized onto a board, or a metal. So I bought the metal. This has got a, a hanger. And um, so you stitch this. And then finish it and stick it on there, you know. Came with even the magnets. So I bought that from her. It's going to be super cute. So the one I got is called Liberty, or America. America, yeah. Isn't that cute? And I do have one of those little buckets, so I don't know. She has a whole bunch of them for different seasons. So I got that. And then this, I couldn't resist because of my love of white painted wood anyway this pattern has um, you know a scissor holder an or container a little pin cushion a scissor fob and then a little design that goes in the bottom of a tray and she had all of these things here packaged together so you get every single piece you get all the wood you know the, the thing to hold the um, scissors, the ort container, the pin cushion, and the tray. You have to paint it yourself and everything. $10. Can you believe that? $10 for all of that. And it's so cute. And it was darling. She had it there. It was so cute. I can't wait to do that. And then I went to... Oh. And I also bought the fabric and like the little kit for the pail. So this goes to this. It has the threads and the fabric. Like that. And then I went to Lindy's Silver Needle and there I bought a bunch of odds and ends. <laughs> so I bought a couple of the Jabco pin packs because I love them. I love the patriotic and the fall. I bought this tweezers because my tweezers is falling apart and it has a little holder and I guess it's like it looks like it's really fine like really really sharp tip so that'll be good because I use my tweezers a lot. I couldn't resist these black pins like, when do you ever see black pins? I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I think they're awesome. Probably to display a pin cushion or something like that. So I got those. Um, I bought some of the um, chenille. And this is from Lady Dot Creates. And I bought vanilla just to have a nice neutral color. 
and that was from all from Wendy's and a couple patterns. I think that's where I got these. So this is the one that Priscilla and Chelsea are doing the the uh, stitch along, and then this one, which is so cute. I love that little house in front of the pot and the little sunflower, and I love sunflowers, so. I think that's all my stash, which was quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. I don't know if there's anything else. Ugh. I did have one more pumpkin. No, there's nothing in there. This is just the box that all the stuff for the class came in. And then I went to, besides the class, I took this other thing called um, a round robin. And the way that works is um, you go and sit in a room with a bunch of other people and the, and it goes for an hour and, the, and six designers come through one by one. So a designer will come in, explain what her project is, you know, give you like a rundown of the project and then um, talk a little bit about herself and then she leaves and then the next designer comes in. So um, there, and there's six in an hour. So you walk away with six little... Um, small projects. So I did that. I did the Round Robin 2 and the stuff I got from it was um, a button box. This was from Noteworthy Needle and so it came with the box and inside are all the supplies to stitch this top. There's like buttons and isn't that cute? It has buttons on it. And then um, this was from a lady whose business is called White Lion, and she made, gave us this little pouch that she made, and then the design, oh yeah, it was a little, um, it's a little, we got the scissor fob, which is this little heart, and then everything you need is in this little pouch, like the linen, the instructions, the thread, and then I also got... This was from Susan Greening Davis, and this is, I think it's an ort container to hold your orts. So, so you get this little bag, and then all the materials to make a little, um, you stitch, oh, you stitch a little thing that says snippets. And this is like banding, so the edges are finished. So all you have to do is is um, stitch it and attach it on here. You don't have to finish it or anything like that. And that's really cute. And all the supplies needed to make that. Super cute. Susan Greening Davis. Um, this one is from the Nebby Needle. And this is a little Biscornu. And it's got everything in there. And I think there's even... Um, crushed walnut shells in it and the instructions and all the materials to make a little biscorno and then from Beth Seal we got a little pin cushion and it's covered with these little um, wool flowers and she's like really into buttons antique and you know vintage buttons So you get the buttons and the little flowers and the thread and the linen and the little fabric for the backing and the instructions on how to make it. So that was super cute. All in this really cute little box. <clears throat> and then, last but not least, is a little Christmas ornament. And this was from... Um, who is this from? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of her name. I don't know if it was Romy. There were there were three Italian designers there. Oh, Simona. This is from Simona. So it's Mani Di Dani. I'm sure you guys have heard of Mani Di Dani. Di Dani. So it's a little ornament that just says, you know, you can either do Navidad, Natali, or Christmas 2018, and then she gave us this little hand-painted button. Isn't that so cute? 
and that goes like in the middle of the linen with Christmas on top and the date on the bottom. It comes off of it joyly, but isn't that so stinking cute? And then all the materials you need to finish it, the little bells, and I think it hangs from a little like rod. I took it apart because I had to look at all this stuff. <laughs> so it was cute. It was really packaged cute. It was like in a little brown bag and this was stapled to the top. So it looked a lot cuter when I first got it, but I know you're supposed to wait to show everything before you open it, but I couldn't resist. I had to look at all the stuff that's in there. Super cute. So that was the sixth thing. So you walk away at the at the end of an hour, you walk away with six different little, you know, projects to do. So that was it. That was my needlework galleria. Uh, there were there were two stitching rooms there in the hotel at the, in the lab like off of the lobby of the hotel and so um, I was like nervous because I was there by myself essentially my husband's not gonna stitch and he went to there's um, this was in St Charles Missouri so it's like right outside St Louis and old St Charles is like a really cool area where there's like cobblestone streets and you know, little shops and antiques and things like that. So my husband went and hung around there and um, while I was stitching. So, um, you know, I was just kind of looking for somebody to stitch with. It was It's kind of intimidating when you don't know anybody. And so I saw these two ladies from my Embroiderers Guild and I was like, oh, are you guys going to be stitching? This was like late Thursday night. And I was like, are you going to be stitching tomorrow? And they're like, yeah, we're in this room. Come on in. So the next day... Um, I went in there and they weren't there and there was this lady sitting at a table by herself and you could tell there were like other people sitting around her but there were some empty chairs so I was like oh can I come and sit by you and she was like sure and she was like so sweet and I sat down with her and I got talking to her and it turns out she lives like in southern Wisconsin and I live in northern Illinois so that's not too far away and then other people started coming back and it turns out it was the exact table of these ladies from my guild and there were some people there who were in the guild years ago that I lost touch with so it was really nice to like see these people that I already knew and I don't know how I just happened to find that exact table but so I sat and stitched with them all day on Friday until I had to go to um, the round robin and that was my last event. So I went to the round robin and then my husband and I got in the car and we took off and drove home, which was not the greatest idea because it was late. I mean, the round robin ended at seven and then we had to go eat and things like that and then hit the road. And it's almost a six hour trip for us. So we got home pretty late. And, you know, if I had it to do over again, I would have just paid to spend the next, spend that night and go home the next day. But we had so many things going on with the wedding, and so we really needed to get back, and so that's what we did. So we made it fine, and all's well that ends well. And um, But anyway, it was so much fun, and I really enjoyed that time stitching with other people, because that's something I don't really get to do much. I'm going to try to do more of that in the future, because it's really nice. And, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but my family just thinks I'm you know, weird, and <laughs> they don't get the cross-stitch thing. They don't share that with me, and, um, you know, it's nice to have people who understand what you're talking about and who enjoy it as much as you do, and I love to see what people are stitching and what kinds of things people, you know, like and what they buy, and that helps me as a designer to, you know, really see what is popular and you know, hear what people don't like and their complaints and things like that too. It's all, it's all helpful and it's all good. So I'm going to try to do more of that in the future. So that was Needlework Galleria. I totally recommend it. If you can go next year, go, go. It is so much fun. The Merchant Mall alone is worth it. I mean, even if you can't, a lot of people that came didn't even take classes. They just came for the mall and for the time to stitch together with people you know and if you have to come by yourself I'm here to tell you you'll find people to stitch with you know people are very welcoming and sweet and so and you know St. Charles Missouri is really 
a nice area. It's not overcrowded. It's not hard to drive through St. Louis. It's not like Chicago. You know, I guess those of us who live around Chicago and have dealt with Chicago traffic are kind of shell-shocked, and so every other place looks amazing. We would love to have traffic like that, because our traffic is literally insane. Um, you have to be so aggressive to drive in Chicago. But, um, so, yeah, Needlework Gallery, totally worth it. So much fun. You know, Kathy and her sister and her staff, they just do a wonderful job. There's a really good variety in the Merchant Mall. You know, something for everyone and different things that you don't see. And a lot of designers and even shops will bring, like, exclusives just for that show and things you can, aren't going to be able to find other other places and so it's awesome you should really go if you can i'm hoping to be a vendor next year i've got to contact kathy and figure that out but um yeah it should be awesome okay so let's move on what else was i going to talk about let me find my notes i'm buried under all this stash <laughs> oh here they are um, so the wedding, we had the wedding on Saturday. I, um, made all the cookies for the, um, rehearsal dinner. So it wasn't cookies for the reception. It wasn't that many, but I did quite a few and, um, you know, they take a long time, but it was so much fun and they turned out really good and they were a big hit. Everybody loved them. And we had a beautiful rehearsal dinner. It was, it was in like a little, um, Kind of a little hipster restaurant and the food was amazing it was so delicious they did a great job with that and uh then the wedding on saturday we had good weather it was a little bit chilly but that's good for me because i'm always i always run hot so i'd rather be cold than hot and um it was like a family style reception church wedding the bride looked beautiful. My son, Lucas, was so happy. He just, um, I don't think he realized beforehand, you know, he's kind of quiet and reserved type of person who doesn't like to be in the spotlight. So I think leading up to it, he was a little bit apprehensive. But then, like on that day, there's such an outpouring of love for a new bride and groom. And I don't think he expected that. So he ended up having a, just a really great time and I think he was just blown away by how kind everybody was and just the feeling of the day. I mean, who doesn't love a wedding? So it was awesome. So we had a great time. It was in Milwaukee, so we had to go stay in a hotel again. <laughs> and um, that was fun. My granddaughter, Amy, was just beside herself all about just staying in the hotel. She was, like, so excited by that. And we had her. She was the flower girl, so we had her most of the time with us. Um, my poor daughter, who is pregnant right now, she, the day before the, re yeah, the day before the rehearsal dinner, she um, had a little complication and ended up in the hospital. And so she was in the hospital Thursday night and then all morning trying to, you know, put a fire under the doctors to release her so she could make it to the wedding. And she did make it to the wedding. But, you know, it was a little bit stressful. <laughs> you know, whenever it rains, it pours a lot of times. So it was just that one of those situations where there was a lot going on. But all's well that end well. We had a great time. Um, we love our new daughter-in-law. She's the sweetest. We, her family is the sweetest. And everything was just amazing. Okay, I had to go get some of these cookies because I tried to show them... I was going to show you a picture last time, and I couldn't figure out how to do it, so here they are. Aren't they cute? They turned out really cute. This is like black sanding sugar in the middle, and these are the only two left. <laughs> there were a few left. So that's the cookies. It took me forever to make them, but it was really fun. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is um, last year... I did this prairie schooler and I know I've showed this before and so this is a frame that I bought at Goodwill it was $3.99 and I chalk painted it white and then I just used the whatever the backing was piece of cardboard that was in there and I chalk painted that with 
chalkboard paint and put the magnets on and finish this like a flat fold and this fits in here. This is a chalk marker that I just did the little doodad. So this is my fall prairie schooler piece. I love this piece. It's probably one of my favorite things I've ever stitched. I love it. Anyway, I wanted to show it again because I, this year I'm going to um, do, I did this one and I'm going to finish it the same way and it's the same size and then put that one in here for Christmas. So here's my finished Christmas one. Ah. Okay. There. I just finished this a couple nights ago. It hardly took me any time at all to stitch this. This was a really fast stitch. I think because um, there's so many letters in there, so it makes it easier, you know, it goes faster. And then also like this top part, I the black in here, I didn't like the coverage, so I actually made like a cross stitch and then I went back over it again. So it's like, I don't know, it's like a cross stitch and a half to fill in the space. I think I did that here on the black too, just so that it would... Be more filled in but I love this isn't it cute and then I did change the snowman um, I didn't really like the snowman his face you can see it I don't know he has kind of a mean he looks kind of mean to me <laughs> so I changed the face I made his head a little wider and his eyes a little wider apart just to make him a little bit cuter So anyway, I'm excited to get that finished and that'll be ready for Christmas and then I can keep my frame out. Um, also, what else is going on? Um, I have decided, well, I was going to join the um, stitch along for the Hawk One Hollow because I have this long history with Hawk Run Hollow. I started Hawk Run Hollow in 2005 when it first came out. I'll show you. So when it first came out, I bought all the stuff. I bought those silks to do it with on 40 count linen. And 40 count linen is my nemesis. I just don't enjoy it. It's just too small. I can't see. I don't have the best eyes in the world. So I, I just can't see it. I don't enjoy working on it. This is as far as I've gotten. I think I did this block last year. So for the longest time, I only had the top row done. I put in there the year 2005. Because <laughs> I guess when I started it, I had high hopes that I was going to get it done. I'm working on this block right now, which is really no fun for me because it's like not only is it 40 count which I have a hard time seeing it's also like a lot of neutrals and whites and light colors on new like a neutral background so it's hard to see I keep making mistakes and uh, yeah anyway so in, instead of I love all the Hawk Run Hollow pieces I love every one of them they're gorgeous they're all gorgeous and I want them all hanging in my home but I decided when the stitch along came up, at first I was going to do village. I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll just do village. I've always wanted to do village. I love that one. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to start another Hawk Run Hollow piece when I still have, this is like my oldest whip, still sitting there. And I love this. I want it to be done, but I just don't like working on it. <laughs> anyway, so... I'm trying to be motivated by the Sal to work on this sucker and finish it once and for all. I've got, it's like half done, right? A little bit more than half done. So I think I could finish it. Come on. <laughs> anyway, so Cheryl McKinney, here's my Hawk Run Hollow. Houses of Hawk Run Hollow. This is my dilemma. I'll never stitch on 40 count again something that big. 
But the other thing is, and this may sound weird to a lot of people, but I don't really like silks. I just, they're okay for some things, but for a piece this big, I, for some reason, I just don't really enjoy them that much. I like DMC and I like a larger count. And I think because I kind of like, you know, a lot of people like really tiny min miniature cross stitch and it is beautiful. It's not that I don't like it, but I prefer chunkier things. I don't know if that's just because I like, I like a more graphic style and more, um, I don't know, like more like heavier coverage or something. I just like DMC. I like two strands of DMC. I like two strands of DMC on like 28 or 32. I think it looks beautiful. I love the sheen that DMC has, you know, and I do work a lot with the over dyed sampler threads and I love them, but I still think I prefer DMC because it just has that beautiful sheen. And when you have, um, you know, all those threads, like, you know, all crossed the same way and it, ju it just looks beautiful. It's just beautiful. I think I'll give you an example. I don't have this ready. Like I didn't iron it cause I wasn't planning to pull this out, but this is a whip that I'm determined to finish by Christmas. This is a stocking for, I've shown this before too. This is a stocking for my daughter-in-law, Annalise. Um, and she, it matches, it's a shepherd's bush stocking and it matches the one that I made for my son Aiden when he was a little boy. But here's an example. Like, look at how pretty. See that DMC? When you have all the crosses going the same way and it just picks up that sheen and I love the coverage of it. I just, I just think that's so pretty. I'm getting there on this one. All I have left is like a little band, like three bands on the bottom and two of them are just like really skinny ones. And then the shepherd's crook. And that's it. And then all the embellishments. So I'm really getting there on this. But I just, that's what I prefer. That's what I prefer. You know, call me weird, but I just, I love good old DM. Look at how pretty that is. <laughs> that's what I like. That's what I like. <clears throat> so that's my dilemma with Hawk Run Hollow. I, I hope I can get it finished this year. It's been hanging over my head just forever. I'm excited that there's a stitch along because I know that while I'm watching everybody else stitch it and seeing the pictures on Instagram and seeing people talk about it and even just watching Cheryl McKinney's um, video, her Stitch With Me video and watching her start her village, you know, that helps inspire you and get you going and make you want to do it. So you know, hopefully this will be the inspiration I need to get Hawk Run Hollow completed once and for all. Okay, and one more thing I want to show you before I go is, um, so I had the pumpkin drilled at Needlework Galleria, and then I also had a white one done. So this one has the word boo on it with these little squiggly things. And I'm just, I'm going to do the word in black and then I'm going to do these squiggly things probably in green because I think that'll look really pretty on the white pumpkin. So I'm excited to get these done. I hope I can get them done by Halloween because I think they're so cute. They're so cute. I have to find, see what I did with the pattern so you can see what it looks like. I think I stuck it in one of these other patterns. You know, I tell you guys, <laughs> I just have stuff everywhere. Do you have stuff everywhere? They say that's the sign of a designer. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably in a bag somewhere. But where, I do not know. Anyway, if I find the pattern so that you can see what the finished one looks like. 
I'll show it on my next video or I'll, I know I'll post a picture on Instagram because that I know how to do. Last time I tried to post a picture of the cookies when I was working on them and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I did look into some editing software so hopefully my editing will be a little bit better this time. I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying. Anyway, so, oh, one last thing I forgot. I have signed up to go to Cindy's retreat in Tennessee, which is um, Cindy's Cross Stitch, I think is her channel. I'll put the link below. Anyway, she's having a treat next year in Tennessee in October. And so I will be there and I'm probably going to vend. I'll probably bring things for sale. And I'm excited. I'm excited because there's some people going to that that I really want to meet, such as Cheryl McKinney. I want to meet you. And also um, Joan and Kelly are going and I'm excited. I, yeah, I'm excited to meet them. They're awesome. My sister lives in Minnesota, so I love watching them because it feels like home to me. <laughs> they remind me a lot of her and yeah, so that's awesome. And some other people too, which I can't think of right now, but anyway, so that'll be fun. And I'll give one shout out, um, some new floss tubers that I've been watching. Um, oh, what is their lost in floss is the name of their channel. And there are a couple of girls from Wisconsin, and I'm obsessed with Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin. My husband's retiring soon, and I'm trying to talk him into moving to Wisconsin after he retires. So we'll see. But anyway, um, I love them. They're hilarious. The very first thing I watched was a spoof of Pam and Stephanie that they did that was just hysterical. And um, they just, they're longtime friends, and it's really fun to watch them and see them, you know, how much they enjoy each other and, you know, how much they love each other's stitching and the way that they share that. It's just awesome. I just, I really enjoy watching them. So, um, Lost in Floss, look for them. I'll put a link below, too. Okay, I think that's it for today. Hopefully I'll be back sooner rather than later. I'm trying to get a little bit more regular with my videos and trying to learn how to edit better and things like that. So anyway, have a wonderful October. Have a great um, Halloween if I don't see you before that. And um, keep sharing your pictures. And, you know, thank you for all the comments that I get on my videos. I don't know how I have over a thousand subscribers already. I think some of that is because I had some painting videos before, so some of them are from that, but um, wow, thank you. It's lovely, and everybody leaves such beautiful comments, and I try to comment back. I really do, um, and thank you for taking the time to watch and taking the time to comment and, you know, for liking my videos and subscribing. I really appreciate it, and um, talk to you soon. Bye.